today we're looking at Birmingham Pen Company's Pennsylvania Railroad Boiler Blue Black, winning the award for the longest name in history. Hi, I'm Adam and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now the Pennsylvania Railroad Blue Black is a blue black ink. To make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples, I put the ink into a different pen for a day, I then put it into a Noodler's Nib Creeper to take my notes for this video. Now before we get to the writing samples, let's look at the sciencey bits. Up first is the chromatography, and I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And what we see is this green line across the bottom that really got in there and is staying. Now the light blue pushes its way up and we see gray popping out at the top. The one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. And that green and that gray largely stayed in the line at the bottom. The blue pushed up, but not as far. Now, neither of these chromatographies pushed very far up this paper. And both of them showed quite a bit, like even that first one showed a lot of the line staying in place, which makes me feel like this is going to be pretty permanent. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page and more importantly, how hard it might be to clean from your pen. Now I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, that thought about the permanence is very there. That extra fine is mostly still just the extra fine, but it did get some blooming, which was weird when we look at the lower, or that, the I in the word high, it bloomed out. Same with the right side of the capital H on the bottom, it bloomed a little bit. This is three days. And pretty much any time there's blooming of the ink like that, it makes me not want to use it as a note taker. And that has to be the line that I draw. So despite the permanence that this ink is about to show, I would not use it as a note taker because I'm afraid of blurring out important information. On the water test, it only removed the absolute top layer of the darkest ink. So there's still a ton of dark ink left. It barely budged really, and that was with 30 seconds. Now the pen flush did a little bit more than water, not a ton more than water, but a little bit. I don't think pen flush is gonna be enough to get this out of your pen, and it wasn't. Bleach did not completely remove it from the paper. Now bleach, removed all of those dark tones but left this brown all over the place and not a brown that we really see in the chromatography. Now that's a one-third bleach solution and it was only 30 seconds. Now I did have to use bleach to get this out of my pen. I put that through my pen. I immediately ran the pen flush a couple of times and then kept flushing it with water until I felt that the ink was completely out. For the inks I've tested, I've found an average viscosity of 2.5, with a realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Birmingham Pen Company's Pennsylvania Railroad Storm or Steam Blue Black has a viscosity of 2.57, making it normal and very close to average. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done on Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper with the extra fine and medium nib. For the inks I've tested, I've found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Birmingham Pen Company's Pennsylvania Railroad has an average dry time of 15 seconds, making it normal. Now, let's look at the writing samples. I picked this ink up in sample form and this is the problem with their samples. Incredibly messy. I enjoy some of their inks. I hate their samples. To keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. We get no bleeding. No ghosting. The 1.1 gives no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. It does offer some nice shading. It's where we get to see it's blue, black. Okay, it's definitely blue with black here. 
the shading occurs in the B is much darker, the H is much darker, the end of the M is much darker. When it gets much darker, it turns towards that black, and it's very nice. But then we go to extra fine, which is much darker, and it is black. The extra fine is no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, nine seconds to dry. The medium is the exact same tone as the extra fine, black. With no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, 15 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both shows no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it. The smear test shows you could recover it and lets you see the blue again. So the blue's there. Technically. Tomoy River, no bleeding, plenty of ghosting. The 1.1, still, we get to see that blue come through, which is nice. I wish it would do this all the time. The 1.1, uh, the 1.1 is no feather, spread, halo sheen, and no shade at all. It is just that kind of blue that is this blue-black. The extra fine gets much darker. It becomes black again. It has no feather spread, halo sheen or shade, 14 seconds to dry. That was not any kind of spreading or grossness. That was all me on the quick. The medium is the exact same tone as the extra fine. It has no feather spread, halo sheen or shade. It's black. 24 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both shows no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it in the smear test. You could actually recover this if you smeared it while you were writing. Rhodia. No bleeding, no ghosting. That's not a bleed spot. That's me being sloppy. That's from a page underneath or something. The 1.1 still gives us that actually blue-black. The only time we're seeing blue-blacks is with the 1.1. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and it shades very nicely. When we look at Pennsylvania, we see it go from blue to black to blue to black to blue to black. All the way across, blue to black, blue to black. It's fantastic in 1.1. But you go to the extra fine and it becomes black. And it has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, and no shade. It's black. Ten seconds to dry. The medium is the exact same tone with no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade of black. With 18 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it. In the smear test, you could probably recover this. And we see the blue. So, Levenger paper. Levenger, pa <laughs> Levenger paper gives us no bleeding, no ghosting. The I'm going to try and edit that out. I'm probably going to forget. <laughs> the 1.1 gives no feather spread, halo sheen, and it gives that same lovely shading. The blue to black to blue to black to blue, all the way across. You see constantly, every time your nib crosses back over itself, it gets a little black spot, and then it goes back to blue. So it is very nice. So every time it crosses itself, or you double down on a line, like on the, the up and down stroke of an H, it gets to be black. When it's a single stroke, it's, an, it's blue, and it's fantastic. But the extra fine comes along, and it's black. And it has no feather, spread, halo sheen, or shade, seven seconds to dry. The medium is the exact same tone as the extra fine of black. With no feather, spread, halo sheen, or shade, 11 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it in a smear test. You could probably recover this if you smeared while you were writing. And we get to see the blue again. Black and red notebooks. No bleeding. No ghosting. The 1.1 has the blue and none of the black. The 1.1 is no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade, but it's all that really nice blue there. The extra fine gets to be darker. It's a darker, it's a dark blue. It's a dark, dark blue here. This is probably the closest to being a blue black we're seeing out of the extra fine or medium. The, because it's not black yet. The extra fine is no feather, spread, halo sheen or shade, five seconds to dry. The medium becomes black again. No feather, spread, halo sheen or shade, eight seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it. And the smear test, you could probably recover it. And you get to see the blue. I'm only seeing this blue-black occur 
with the uh, stub. So this is in Elon. It's a, a a job notebook. It's nice to use for you know when you just don't want your notebook filled with 90 different things that you could do them all individually. But it does not do well for fountain pens. It has a ton of bleed spots. It has oof, a ton of show through. My beard's hitting the mic. It has a ton of show through. You cannot use the back of the page. The 1.1 has spread. It has no feather, no halo, no sheen, no shade. It is an ugly, ugly color here. It's not the fault of the ink. It's the paper. It's horrible. It's all the blue. There's none of the black in there. It just does not look good. Now we go to the extra fine and it becomes black. And it has no feather spread. Halo sheen or shade. It took two seconds to dry. The medium has no spread it has feathering all over it tiny little feathering all over it again this was a notebook that i like using these notebooks with pencil and then i broke a couple out and said hey let's try them out with fountain pens and they don't like it three second i'm sorry no feather spread halo sheen no feather tons of feather no spread no halo sheen or shade three seconds to dry the scrubby for both show us no color variation we didn't expect it we didn't get it in the smear test you could recover this if you smeared while you were writing. I do like these notebooks. I just wish they worked with fountain pens. That's all that I have for the writing sample. Instead of finding inks that look like Birmingham Pen Company's Pennsylvania Railroad, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. Now, because this is such a dark blue black that really comes across as black a lot of the times in the writing, I wanted something bright. A very nice orange or orangey red color. I chose Noodler's Habanero. Before I give my opinion on this ink, I would ask if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, I would invite you to subscribe. So what do I think of Birmingham Pen Company's Pennsylvania Railroad Boiler Steam Blue Black? This is the kind of blue black that I personally do not care for. It leans much more as a black with occasional, if you're lucky, some blue. I like my blue blacks to be much more of a dark blue with black shading areas. So this doesn't fit what I care for most in a blue black ink. It's not that the ink is bad, it's that it's bad for me. I don't like my blue blacks to be so black. It does make me happy. I got this in a sample that I get to use up and move on. Thanks for watching.